How are we all this morning then? Or should I say this afternoon? It is not morning. Why am I lying? Um, how are we feeling? Sore heads? Good celebrations? Well happy? Well content? Make mine a treble. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get all of that out of the way. Let's just sit down and let's talk about yesterday because we all know what we're here to talk about. And that's Celtic 1, Rangers 0. We're in to the final of the Scottish Cup. And no disrespect whatsoever. Was that a voice crack? I think it was a voice crack. No disrespect whatsoever to Inverness. I, I'm not uh, overlooking any opposition. But Celtic have one hand on yet another treble. It could be our fifth treble in the last seven years. It is the stuff of dreams. It was the kind of thing that this time seven years ago you would have been branded insane to think could ever happen. But no, we are genuinely on course for winning what could be our fifth treble in seven years after yet another victory against Rangers and Michael Beale yesterday. See all this talk that they keep doing. Oh, the next derby's got to be different. They've not been very fucking different. Pardon my French in this video because it is one of these videos where I probably am going to drop a few F-bombs here and a few different words here. I like to spice it up a little bit and keep you on the edge of your seat. I know it's not for everybody, but guess what? I don't care. <laughs> right now, I don't care. I'm happy. Celtic have won again. But what I will say now, I, I don't know where I'm, what direction I'm going to go with this video. There's so much to talk about in relation to the game itself, the ramifications of the game, the opposition and the meltdown coming from that side. There's so much we could talk about, but what I do want to start with is talking about all this nonsense that we've seen in regards to the next game will be different, oh Rangers are back, oh we'll do it differently, nothing's changed, Celtic once again yesterday were, I don't want to say very poor, but we weren't great, we weren't good, it was one of once again our weaker performances and yet Rangers still can't beat us, it speaks volumes as to how bad they are at this moment in time and what a mess that club is in. Um, and, and and I think that should they should learn a lesson. I will not be surprised if come let's say it's ten to four just now. I would not be surprised if come six o'clock tonight the Daily, the Daily Record's reporting on their website that James Tavernier says it'll be different in two weeks' time, and they're going to show Celtic up for who they truly are and comments along those lines because it keeps happening and happening and happening. Bill has came in and he set the president and 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 just talking nonsense and coming up with all these excuses and bigging himself and Rangers up to being something they're not and we've slapped him down three times now once in his own backyard four times now once in his own backyard once in a cup final once at Celtic Park and now in their last chance to win a trophy this season it is a gutless spineless and yeah that's the two words I would use for Rangers because it's gutless spineless and something else but that, they're gutless they're spineless and that's the Rangers we keep coming up against and we're just so bloody good even when we're not at our best, we get the job done. And they never learn their lesson. And long may it continue. So obviously, as usual, this uh, reaction is a day later than uh, the game. I've always made this point very clear. When it's at Hamden, with the bus and such and everything else, it's not exactly easy to get back up the road and make a video straight away. Plus, I wanted to enjoy myself, which I did. But during the 90 minutes, did I enjoy myself? Not a great amount, I must say. Um, yeah, first half I thought was was decent. We obviously got the goal that I thought we, we deserved. Um, and, and it was it was okay from our point of view. But second half, oh, absolutely not. Second half, we were on the back foot. But what I will say is this. For every doubt and every question that's been asked of Celtic players specific Celtic players, sorry, um, about their ability and then our ability to hold on and, and, and to defend by, by some people, you know, and, and you know who I'm talking about here when I say, Carol Starfelt, for example, gets some amount of criticism from the other side of the city and even some of our own supporters and saying he's not good enough and yesterday I thought he was absolutely immense. Cameron Carter Vickers got man in the match yesterday. I genuinely think it was Carol Starfelt for me. It was one of the two of them but I thought Starfelt was the better of the two and he deserves so much credit and so does that whole Celtic back line and, and, and everybody involved in the defensive aspect of our game yesterday and um, because we done so, such a good job at making sure Rangers didn't get a goal in that second half because they were chasing they were chasing they were chasing and every ball they put out of the box and every shot they had from range our defenders and midfielders managed to deal with it 
yes, we should have done more with it when we moved up the park and we tried to advance our game. There wasn't an awful lot to talk about in the second half when you move up the park, but defensively, brilliant. And I thought that Joe Hart, in fact, maybe had one of the best games of his Celtic career and uh, yesterday, I thought he was brilliant, he oozed confidence, he was coming out and claiming absolutely everything, um, he made a couple of big saves as well, I think the Joe Hart, the two centre-halves, they deserve an, an, an immense amount of credit for their performances yesterday, and I thought they were great, because that second half, we were poor, and we kind of left the door open and the possibility for Rangers to get back into the game, with the way we were sort of allowing them to, to see more of the ball and allowing it to come forward, but it's how you deal with these things that matter, and we just dealt with it really, really well. Also, it helps when the opposition are dug meat and they couldn't score in a brothel, but you've still got to deal with that, and there still is players on that Rangers side who, who probably should be taking these chances and making more of them, but we managed to, to try and nullify, we, we nullified that, and, um, and honestly, I couldn't be more happy when you look at the, what it gets you at the end of the game, I don't care how you do it in these big derby games, the derby semi-final or the derby cup final, I don't care if you win by the skin of your teeth with an offside goal, and you know, I, I really don't mind, as long as you, you win and you get the, the, the advantage on the scoreboard, the 90 minutes is sort of irrelevant, but, you know, yesterday, we made the best of a bad situation, you could say, in that second half. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want to paint this picture as if Celtic were hopeless. I mean, Rangers weren't much better. The way that I'm talking would, would give you a black and white impression that we were shite and Rangers were great. The Rangers weren't great. In fact, they were pretty rotten too. They just had more of the ball and probably should have done more with the ball in the second half. But, as I said, they're dug me. They don't have that quality that half their, half their players have got one foot out the door and they're desperate to go. Um, and, and the manager and the fans are desperate for the season to end. Meanwhile, on Celtic side, you know, we don't need to, to put an, uh, unnecessary pressure on ourselves. And that was one thing from that second half performance, despite being on the back foot. It never, for me anyway, and this is just my personal perspective, it didn't look as though Celtic or our players were under any form of pressure yesterday or any sort of nerves. It, it felt like we, we knew where the game was going and we knew the opposition we had to deal with aren't that great and it was just like yeah we'll, we'll be fine we'll be okay and I just never looked at us and every time they went forward I didn't feel like they were going to score there was a couple of big chances that you kind of breathe through your teeth and you go right well that could have been difficult that could have been something that would have struck made us struggle for the rest of the game you know that, that obviously hindsight stuff like that but every time they went forward I just didn't feel like anything was going to happen so it's good that we got the job done in the first half um we got a goal at a really perfect time Shades of that cup final and uh, back, uh, back in what February, um, getting it right on the, the stroke of half time, really. But the way that the goal came about, once again, it, it's it's typical Celtic stuff. It, it's the it's the we never stop. We we genuinely don't stop. Um, whereas Rangers did stop, and that's how we end up scoring a goal. It's one of the most bizarre derby goals you're ever going to see with the way that Barisic stares at the ball as if. You know, the game has been stopped. It's Ricky stuff, isn't it? Play to the whistle, and that's what Celtic done. But the bigger picture, take away that we never stop for a moment. It's just a goal that kind of... It's nice imagery for where both teams are at this moment in time. Rangers, clueless. Celtic, ruthless. That's what that goal made me feel. Um, And I think that the evidence is in the reaction from every player in the park. All those Rangers players, all those Celtic players ruthless versus clueless that's how it felt to me um but I, i'm not caring as i said couldn't care how we get our goals and derbies just make sure and score them obviously it was really nice to have jota back in the team and you can see the impact he has as i said in the preview this is a guy who has a direct influence in every single derby he plays and that was the script yesterday having him and hitati back and available was great seeing them in the team was great um, and, and they're such key players to, to everything that we do. You could just see the difference with them in the side. Um, and I was happy with what I seen from both of them yesterday. Obviously, their performance, uh, their, their, their games were cut short, but performances were great. Fine performances, nothing wrong with them. Smart game management, player management, I should say, from Ange to get them all fairly, kind of keep them in some cotton wool. Um, but to having them back is fantastic. It's always a nice sort of. Sort of it eases your mind a little bit, doesn't it? Because you, you don't need to think, oh, where's something going to come from? If these two are out, those two are out, no, they're back, and hopefully they're back for good. And on that note, can I just say, this this is what, what I mean. You know, you, on one side, you've got players like Alfredo Morelos, who, you know, obviously cares 
more about his food than his football at this moment in time. But he's out there very clearly out the door. Head's not there. Doesn't want to try. Doesn't want to kick a ball. And it's Chris Boyd, who I hate. <laughs> as Chris Boyd said today, you got to agree with Chris Boyd saying, if you're a Rangers fan, you should be disgraced by that. Disgraceful performances from Relos. That's what's happening on one side. Whereas on our side, and what's happening at Celtic, is you've got a guy like Cameron Carter-Vickers out there on one knee, basically, needing surgery, putting out man-of-the-match performances. That is incredible, and it speaks a ton about the characteristics and, and, and the personality of the guys that I'm just bringing in and the trust and faith that these players have in that manager that they're willing to rest themselves on one knee to go out and play in a game like that where we all know these can get dirty and, and we all know the opposition can get dirty. You know, if all I had to do, take was one player to go slide into Cameron Carter Vickers and that injury that he was walking into the game on could have been worse. Um, but he didn't worry, he went out, he gave it his best man and match performance as I said and that's the characteristics of the players we have. They don't quit. They're winners, serial winners, whereas the other side are serial fucking losers. Um, as we now know, the, the, the kind of ramifications of that is that Vickers will now miss the rest of the season. Ange has confirmed that. He'll be out. He's going for his surgery, but I'm glad he is. Uh, let's get him wrapped up in cotton wool and, and give him as long as a, a period as possible to get fit and ready um, for the next campaign. But huge credit to him and huge respect for him for, for going out in that park yesterday and giving out the performance he did. We have yet to lose to Rangers this season. We have one more derby left in two weeks' time. It's the most meaningless and pointless derby in, in a long time as well. Nothing really on the line. Pride on the line for Rangers. But we are talking about you know 2016-17 levels of success against Rangers here. Sweeping every trophy. Knocking them out. Beating them in the final of one cup. And then knocking them out the other cup. Um, and then, you know, the potential opportunity to be unbeaten against them. You know, we have won four of the five games we've already played this season, which is nuts. It's, it's, it's bonkers, really. And long may this continue. I, I love it. Um, but, you know, the, the, the bigger picture from yesterday's game is that Rangers fans should be very, very worried. And I always come in here just to be honest, and on this channel to be honest, and I'm never going to let anything hang my honesty away from me, but any Rangers fan who's trying to deny or live in denial about what Celtic are at this moment in time, you're in for a rude awakening, and you're in for a torturous few months, maybe years. This success is not stopping as long as Ange Postecoglou is here, and Rangers are miles behind off and on the park. This isn't a summer fix for Michael Beale. It was for us, somehow. Somehow we made the best of it and we found Ange Postecoglou and he took us back to the league title quicker than anyone anticipated. And listen, I'm not writing off the chances of that happening, but the probability is very low when Celtic are this good. The difference is as well, Rangers weren't ever that good, even as league title winners. They weren't that great. Celtic right now are very great. And it's going to take a lot for Rangers to catch up and beat us. It's going to take Ange Postecoglou leaving Celtic. But yesterday is the prime example of where both clubs are right now and what's happening. And I personally love it. But it's got to be, and I don't know how many Rangers fans are watching on at this point because it would probably be quite painful, but it must be really eye-opening when there's games like that yesterday when everything is on the line your season is on the line you've got one more chance to beat your rivals and win a trophy and stop them winning another treble and you're handed that I think they are in grave danger and bring it on I can't think of anything else that I, I wanted to specifically highlight from, from yesterday's game because there's still work to be done we've also got a league campaign to finish we've got games coming up I am in party mode. Trust me. I am in party mode. I am very happy. Very rough, but very happy. And, and, and nothing's going to take away from me. But there's still a job to be done. And as I said at the start of the video, let's not undermine... Um, let's not you know, think that it's done. That Inverness are just going to lie down and get beat. They'll, they'll provide a test, uh, uh, like any other team, and we've got to get over that. So... We'll see how that comes on the day when it gets to the Scottish Cup final. But genuinely, life is perfect right now as a Celtic fan. No quarrels. It would be hard to be annoyed. Um, and I just can't wait 
to just see where we go and how we develop because it's just it's such an exciting time. And they're loving it, aren't they? Yeah. Right. That'll do it. I've checked in. Hopefully we get a podcast together over the next couple of days and we can all meet up and talk about things and have a laugh and point fingers and yada yada. Um, and maybe we'll have a look into some of the meltdowns as well. Yeah. Right, cheerio.